In St. Petersburg, men removed flowers from a makeshift memorial honoring dead Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny. Almost immediately, new flowers took their place. Just one day earlier, police detained mourners for laying flowers in Navalny's honor. Independent Russian media and human rights group OVD Info reported no fewer than 400 detentions at events across some 32 cities after news of Navalny's death broke late last week. Navalny had been a longtime critic, broadly, of the Kremlin and specifically of Russian President Vladimir Putin. In December 2020, he accused Russia's security agency, the FSB, of poisoning him with a confirmed Russian-made nerve agent. Russia officially blames Navalny's death on an undisclosed illness at the Arctic penal colony where he was serving a 19-year sentence. Western leaders aren't buying it. Make no mistake, Putin is responsible for Navalny's death. Putin is responsible. What has happened to Navalny is yet more proof of Putin's brutality. No one should be fooled, not in Russia, not at home, not anywhere in the world. The news of Navalny's death came less than one week after former President Donald Trump told supporters at a rally that if re-elected, he would encourage Russia to do, quote, whatever the hell they want to NATO members he felt weren't spending enough money on defense. Trump remains the Republican Party's front runner to challenge Biden for the presidency in November. As of this writing, he has yet to comment on Navalny. When you hear Donald Trump say in South Carolina a week ago that he would encourage Putin to invade our allies if they weren't pulling their weight, that's bone chilling because all he did in that one moment was empower Putin. And all he did in that moment was he sided with a guy that kills his political opponents. He sided with a thug that arrests American journalists and holds them hostage. And he sided with a guy who wanted to make a point to the Russian people, don't challenge me in the next election or this will happen to you too. At a recent meeting in Munich, foreign ministers from the group of seven leading industrialized nations observed a minute of silence in memory of Navalny. On the sidelines of the meeting, European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen offered condolences to Navalny's widow, Yulia Navalnaya. And as protesters left flowers and notes near the Russian embassy in London, people in Moscow did the same, calling Navalny a hero who fought for freedom. Arash Arabasadi, VOA News.